We have built ensemble AI machine learning strategies that integrate causal inference within the model to be able to capture that variation and to minimize spurious correlations within the data. So our AI, our causal inference, integrating them together, we are actually uncovering the drivers of disease. So what does it mean to introduce causal inference in AI? And then how is this applied to biology to tell you what is, why the disease is occurring? Basically asking the question why. We, we are moving away from association. We are integrating causal inference into these models. We've had three and a half billion years of natural engineering that has gone in to the, the current state of the cell. And taking observational approaches, which is largely what machine learning and artificial intelligence are about, you're going to find associations within your data. Now, why that's problematic is that because of this three and a half billion years of natural engineering, everything in the human genome associates with everything else. So if you run an algorithm on a, a specific cut of data, you're going to get a classification answer, right? So you, you'll find the difference between cancer one or cardiovascular disease in normal tissue. But the underlying features or the predictors that make up that classification solution, if you were to run that algorithm again on the same cut of data, because of that high degree of correlation within the human genome, you're going to come up with a different answer. And so we have built ensemble AI machine learning strategies that integrate causal inference within the model. And we are running multiple iterations of these algorithms on multiple cuts of the data to be able to capture that variation and to minimize spurious correlations within the data. So that's what we're going after. And we have scientific evidence now that we are capable of building causal dependency structures that are actually reflective of the signal transduction cascades that actually occur in the cell, that are responsible for cellular behavior and ultimately driving or dictating phenotype. How do you go to reduce the insurgence of uh, sclerosis? What we are doing is we're using the AI and the probabilistic program, causal inference, to do, and if, if these algorithms are doing their job, they're going to generate hypotheses. They're going to generate leads, very informative leads that then are scientific or experimentalist, then then can go back into these mouse models and say, if we then change the state of say gene X, what happens or what is the phenotype? And so that is how we are working with. We, we generate these causal dependency structures that say that this is a putative driver of disease. We're predicting that this drives disease. And nine out of 10 times thus far, we have hit the nail right on the head. So our AI, our causal inference, integrating them together, we are actually uncovering the drivers of disease. And so what they are finding in the mice then is that when they change the state of that driver gene, and that's what we refer to them as, they change the state of that experimentally, that ends up not only inhibiting plaque development within these animals, if plaque development already exists or they have a experimental design where they let the plaque develop, then they can change the state of the gene and they've shown that that reverses that actual plaque development. So we've, we've taken a major step, inhibiting the disease to reversing the disease now. Where did you find the limitation of the machine learning? So I, I use a number of analogies. Uh, we had talked about the, the three and a half billion years of natural engineering that's gone into the current state of the cell. I also use the analogy uh, of the automobile. So we've had 150 years of collective engineering that's gone into the current state of the automobile. We've engineered it. We know how the ignition system works. So if your car doesn't start in the morning, you know that you don't have to, you can rule out or guess that you have to rotate your tires in order to get the car started. If we were looking at the automobile and had no idea about the, the engineering that has gone into the ignition system, we would not rule out the fact 
that we would have to rotate the tires. We wouldn't know that they weren't connected. And so what we are trying to do in this high dimensional omics space is to reduce those spurious correlations, those associations that are there that we would find from a statistical standpoint, but really have nothing to do with the underlying disease and the question at hand.